The boys' AT rifles no longer have a penalty against bunkers. I think this was kind of like a holdover from when boys' AT rifle blobs were just overwhelmingly powerful. It hasn't really been the case for a long time now. So I think this is fine. Good time for it to come online as now well with the uh, Italian coastal and all the bunker changes. You can see here, it's, you know, it's still going to take them quite a while to chip through a bunker on their own. The Crusader's 57mm upgun received quite a few nerfs. First off to its scatter, now it has the identical scatter to the 40mm gun and also to its near damage, so now it does 100 damage near AoE. So I plotted this graph comparing the 57mm in blue to the 40mm in red and you can see now the 57mm going to have very similar performance to the 40mm in terms of anti-infantry. It's got a little bit more damage, I think uh, especially out the far here, this is 24 versus 15, so nearly 10 more damage around here but the 40 mil actually has a slightly larger AOE. Give us a slightly larger AOE as well. So they're going to be pretty similar. Also, you know, while 57 mil does have slightly better AOE, it has slightly worse rate of fire. So let's see if we can notice this in game. We've got some grenadiers clumped up on the wrong side of sandbags. 40 mil up the top, 57 mil down the bottom. Who's going to kill fastest? I mean, you can notice the rate of fire difference. I know this got a slight head start. Very similar time to kill now between these two. So, yeah, you're not going to be going for the upgun to improve its performance against infantry, really. You're going to be doing that to improve its performance against tanks. The big 75mm gun on the Grant got a penetration buff at all ranges. Now it's got the same penetration as the Panzer IV, both close and long range, but actually slightly more penetration than at mid range, which is kind of important because they've got both the same armor, 170 armor each, same amount of health, pre skirts, pre skirts. So the uh, I think that's like a they're both like a six shot to kill each each other on the main gun, but of course the Grant does have the pea shooter on the top. I think it's got, you know, maybe like 40-ish pin. So probably going to get through for one shot during the exchange We're if the Panzer IV gets the skirts. So kind of nullifying the skirts there. So it should be a pretty even matchup now between these two, which I think is important because, you know, the Grant can only fight head on. It can't, you know, it's, it's only got a limited cone of fire with that big gun. And it's got a mobility disadvantage of the Panzer IV the faster top speed, faster acceleration, so it can't really outmaneuver the Panzer IV either. So if it can't win the head-to-head, -head, you're in some big trouble with the Grant. So I think this was justified. The Grant has been seeing almost no play, so a little bit extra pen I think is going to help in these medium v medium matchups. The Matilda has received a penetration nerf, 10 near, 15 far, so it's going to impact it quite a lot in the head-to-head -head matchups against the Axis mediums, things like the Panzer IV and even the Panzer III now. Should bounce quite a few more shells especially at long range so yeah that's interesting you know the matilda did kind of need a nerf has been dominating the game yeah, but yeah this is you know a gentle touch see how it goes in the air and sea battle group the centaur has received quite a few buffs improvements to its aoe profile yeah. now we'll pretty much be doing like i think it's 34 damage like everywhere in its aoe it's only got a really really tiny tiny aoe we could actually do more than that uh, improvements to a scatter should be doing better against vehicles now with the scatter and uh, penetration buff but they didn't buff up its aoe penetration like they did with the brumbia one thing to note so we'll see how it goes now up against this green deer that's mega clumped up damage cap increased to five as well take ground right in the middle of them Infantry squad, so you can see good chunk of damage each shot. You see the damage cap though, only damage in five is in six models. But yeah, three shots to kill on the green deer like that. Pretty reliably as well. It's got a pretty big AoE now after the change. Six radius AoE. Bitch. So yeah, the Centaur is going to be quite a lot better I think after this change. There is one issue though, like you know the Centaur wasn't particularly good last patch, but if it ever is good, it always opens up the opportunity if the map is good for like double AT guns. The, the Brit player can just go double AT guns or maybe even three 
and then just spam centaurs never have to tick up and that's you know it's a little bit degenerate that style of play i don't really enjoy it so it's tough trying to bounce the centaur making it a relevant unit but having it available as a no tech call-in a change to both the lmg commandos and the regular commandos as you can see they've got out of combat healing you don't even need veterancy for this roughly half the rate of base healing and uh, you can heal while you're running around as well you don't have to be stationary or camouflage or anything like that so this typically does give these kind of squads that have stealth quite a lot of extra utility because you know you can take a fight and you can run away hide and heal for a bit instead of having to retreat so they typically do benefit a lot from the out of combat healing so that's a pretty big buff to commandos on top of that they also uh, changed this vet one ability sealment smoke so now when you activate it you'll clear suppression so you can see i'm going to activate it here i'm suppressed Oof. Instantly out of suppression. In fact, you saw I managed to fire a few shots before the smoke actually came out. So you may even get a little bit of extra damage in. It also works if the uh, unit is pinned even. Usually when you're pinned, you can't do anything. Pinned, except for a treat. But here, you can still hit concealment smoke when you're pinned. So I know that that doesn't really matter too much because these days machine guns take an eternity to pin. But maybe against like you know those pinning strafes and stuff or pinning abilities, that'll be quite useful. So yeah, I mean that's a pretty meaningful buff to concealment smoke. It'll make it a lot better the commando overall once you get vet one against machine guns. Also part of the air and sea battle group under the supply surplus ability, the strategic point. You can upgrade these with the field infirmary. These did get a cost decrease a couple of patches ago. Remember. And now the field infirmary, I've got instant build on, has the retreat point, forward retreat point activation. So yeah, quite a few more abilities the, with the forward retreat now after this patch in Co3. Especially in team games, you know, shortening up your retreat like this could be very, very helpful. And you know, as I said, 150 manpower only for this, no fuel cost or anything. Pretty good deal. Does give you healing and forward reinforce. Don't think there are any cooldowns on it either. So yeah, you can activate and deactivate these four retreats just however much you want. I think in Code 2, most four retreat points had like maybe a two minute cooldown. So maybe that's something the devs will have to look into, maybe activating some kind of cooldown on uh, these four retreats to maybe prevent some abuse cases. Having a look at the British Armoured Battle Group, and they've renamed it now to Heavy Armour Battle Group, so that's interesting. Then they've made some changes to the Ford Repair Assembly. They've more than doubled the repair rate from it. So previously, you know, this had a horrible repair rate. Now, same as Engineers with no sweep upgrade. So that makes them a lot more appealing. They're not that expensive either. 150 manpower, 20 fuel is a bit, but you know, typically you're building these kind of things in the late game when fuel isn't as big of an issue. And they don't take up any population either. They also made it so they can repair themselves, which, uh, as I said, for the repair bunker for Wehrmacht, I'm not really uh, that excited about self-repair like this. How much health do these have by default? These guys have got 600, so not quite as much as the bunker. I think they had 720, so these should be a little bit easier to kill than the bunker, but still, yeah, not a huge fan about the self-repair. They also changed designate targets, came down in command point cost from 4 to 2, so that's nice. We barely saw any play before this, because, I mean, look at the area it covers. It's a pretty small area that gets uh, this debuff area. Turn the fog on, because it does provide a recon plane, provides some vision. But I believe the debuff doesn't happen until the plane gets there, so it takes a while before the debuff is active. And then the debuff itself doesn't cover the largest area. In fact, it actually covers a slightly larger area than the circle indicates. That's interesting. If we can move this guy out. Still on. Still on. 
I wonder if it's like a... Oh, no, I think it lost it just then. Yeah. Okay, so maybe they need to make an adjustment there to what the circle is. So I, I did use it about here. But it looks like maybe it's got an extra 10 radius on it. So maybe that's something they could address. The overall, you know, it's, it's okay. It gives you a recon plane, but the buff itself takes a while to activate and covers a relatively small area. Fringe. But it could be pretty helpful... You know, against uh, like something like a tiger that has quite sturdy armor. In the Indian Artillery Battle Group, the off-map Airburst Barrage has received some changes. First off, a cost increase up to 110 munitions. I was kind of expecting that was quite spammed and spammable previously. But they've also reworked the AoE, like massively decreasing the amount of damage it does close to the edge, but increasing a bit towards the outer edges. So. Let's see how this goes. I've got a couple team weapons here. This is usually what you'd Artillery use it against. I was maybe expecting like a like a muni cost change and maybe a slight delay added before the artillery started to fall. Still looks pretty good. Like the you know, as we saw that machine gun got de decrewed pretty fast. If you hit by like three shots depending on how the scatter goes team weapons are going to be toast but it still looks uh, decent also in the Indian artillery battle group the volunteer infantry option has had a command point cost increase up to four uh, I don't think they did a similar move to Luftwaffe for Wehrmacht so that's interesting maybe a little bit of an oversight from them I was personally maybe expecting these manpower cost reductions to be reduced across the board maybe to like 15 percentish because, you know, this is going to cause it to come online maybe a minute and a half later in a game. But it's still just an incredible win condition in the late game. And uh, have, has anybody seen anybody use Pillage like since the first month of the game? It's, it's up against some stiff competition here. On to Africa Core and we're starting out with the Mortar Half Track. It's Vet 1 ability, the incendiary round. This is what made the Mortar Half Track quite good. But they've nerfed the AoE damage on it. Now it will be doing, I think it's 16 damage everywhere where it lands. So we're going to try it out now against the Vickers over here. See how it goes. Take your time, Gunner. Target's at big point. Hmm. Looks like I did 10 damage there, maybe even. Oh no, that's the damage cap. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they, they left the damage cap on this at three instead of bumping up to four like other pieces of uh, light artillery this patch. They've all, all got their damage caps increased, I believe. So they need to address that, bump this up to four damage cap. And yeah, then it's just, just the uh, weapon crew as well absorbing some of that initial impact. So yeah, can't even decrew a machine gun that doesn't dodge at all with this ability anymore. And that's before it even gets extra health from VET. The Flak Feeling has received a couple nerfs. Its damage cap has been reduced from 3 to 2. It has a pretty small AoE to start off with, so this will mainly nerf it against more clumped up unit types. Though I did notice this VET 1 ability, the AP rounds, they didn't have the damage cap reduced on it, though it has an even smaller AoE. So it might not matter too much, but maybe that's something they could tidy up. They've also nerfed the AP rounds. They've dropped the uh, penetration bonus on it slightly. And on top of that, they've made the moving bursts worse. So burst is basically, you know, how long it fires for. Before it takes a break. So that's a burst. That's one burst, as we just saw right there. So on the move now, that will be halved instead of being three quarters of what it usually is while the AP rounds are equipped. So it's going to make the flak feeling quite a lot worse at like chasing down enemy light vehicles. You're going to be doing shorter bursts, doing less damage overall. Uh, I was curious to see though, in terms of a stationary test, now they match up with the Greyhound versus the AP rounds flak feeling. Mid-range, this one's going to have the skirts on it, the extra health. This one out the back will not. I just want to see what's going to happen here. So we're going to have to uh, do some juggling here. All right, here we go. Hopefully I didn't corrupt things too much. Burning. 
So yeah, this specific matchup, the extra health, it, you know, in this case, it didn't really come into play, but it could have makes uh, a, a difference against the flat feeling. And this is uh, its stationary performance, not even with its reduced performance on the move. The Guastatori can now fire their flamethrowers while on the move. Rangers are not going to have all the fun there. So we're going to do a wee experiment, see how this goes. On our way, sir. Now, I believe that they have a 50% moving accuracy penalty, so maybe they can miss. And I don't actually know whether they'll do damage when they miss, so let's see what happens. Yeah, so they miss. And if they miss, they don't do damage. It looks like the angle on it's a bit funky. Yeah, so if they miss, they don't do damage. That's that's interesting. So it could still be the way that if we're using your Gwastatori, you want to like burst, run forwards, burst, run forwards, burst, run forwards. Because otherwise, it seems like, you know, you do have roughly 50% chance to miss, so you're actually going to be missing quite a lot of damage. The Africa Core Marta now has access to smoke canisters. So you do need the upgrade from uh, your armory to unlock My this. And you don't get that range boosting ability like the Wehrmacht one does. But this is pretty good. It's one of those almost instant smoke activations, which is pretty hard to handle, forcing your opponent into attack round shenanigans, you know. Which is, yeah, it's hard to get kills after you deploy a smoke like this. Two minute cooldown. Gonna make the Armada quite a lot more survivable, I imagine. The Panzer III has received some buffs. First off, it's 20 manpower cheaper to buy. And then it's also got more frontal armor now, up to 150. It's only 20 less frontal armor than the Panzer IV. Still got quite weak side armor. But yeah, that's, that's quite beefy on the front. Gonna help it out a lot in, you know, most tank matchups, not just Chaffee as they mentioned in the patch notes, but most tank matchups, a lot of tanks, you know, maybe one 10 ish pin far range. Panzer III is actually gonna be bouncing a decent number of shots now off the front. In the armored support battle group, the Stuka anti tank loiter, now up to 200 munitions from 180. On top of that, they changed it so uh, units won't take multiple passes outside of the circle anymore. circle here. Might take one more. But no more after this, it should be. Because previously, if you didn't back, like, maybe about to here, away from the circle, you continue to get hit. So yeah, should only take one pass after exiting the circle, maximum now. So, combination nerf there. Uh, yeah, this thing has been terrorizing the game for so long to see it finally adjusted. In the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group, they've changed the strafing run. They say they've removed the suppression from it. Still says it suppresses infantry in the description, by the way. So we'll try it out. See how we go against uh, some tanks here, front and rear armor. It doesn't seem to matter which way you come in from. On not any damage only. They say they doubled the damage on these. Mm, 120 munitions for that. No suppression. So they did remove the suppression, but that... I mean, if we compare that to the air burst we just saw earlier, that is not very good. Basilieri have also been changed. Now they only take up 7 population instead of 8. And they've changed the VET-1 here as well to last longer, so they have to be in combat to activate it so you can't sprint around the map. But yeah, 80% speed buff for 10 seconds, that gives you a huge amount of time. But you do have to be in combat before you can activate it. So it does make it a little bit more difficult to uh, get value out of. But you know, combine it with that new grenade that they have, maybe it could be pretty decent to outmaneuver team weapons, stuff like that. They're going to be pretty hard to stop when they're charging around the map 10 seconds at that kind of speed. One more thing I want to say about this battle group, this ability here, vehicle support secure location. You see at the moment, the Panzergrindies have got the combined arms buff, but they don't have 
the secure location buff. We have to get a little bit closer. So I think it would be sensible maybe just make these like the same same distance. Combined arms and the capture bonus. I don't think this is going to make this crazy overpowered or anything like that. Just a little bit more range on this. So combined arms and the capture is the same radius. Final words about the balance of these two factions. I'd say they did a decent job overall here. They kind of hit the biggest outliers. All these vehicles here, the AT loiters. Buffed up a few underutilized units like the Panzer III and the Basilieri, so that's good. Not a lot of changes though for these two factions. Pretty clear this patch was more aimed at Wehrmacht and US forces, both in terms of battle groups, and they had like twice as many balance changes. One thing I will say though is maybe the upgrade center, the training center for Brits needs some attention because you know you see the infantry training a little bit here and there because it can get you a lot of value throughout the rest of the game but you almost never see any of these other upgrades since the bonus damage got removed from them. So maybe uh, the training center needs a look at and a going over because at the moment it adds no spice, no flavor. It's just yeah and when's the last time I don't I've tried light vehicle training it's just too expensive, doesn't make any sense to go for. At least, you know, back in the old days when you were just spamming Stuarts, but that's not really too much of a thing anymore. So yeah, let's let's have a go with the training center, fix this up. Having a look at a few of the bug fixes, I'm not going to be going through all of these, just a couple that I think are the most impactful. So they mentioned relating to casemates, things like the Stug, that they will no longer be indecisive about whether to fire infantry or tanks. Off. They have to rotate to fire it. So let's see what they've done here. So it looks like they want to target tanks. Not on prioritized vehicles. I could shoot at the infantry, but through the uh, target priority selection system, this with its penetration value wants to shoot at something like this with its armor value. That's how the, pen, the uh, tag priority system works. So instead of shooting at a squad of infantry auto shooting, it shoots at the tank. They mentioned that when you cancel an in construction demo charge, you should actually get your resources back for a change. So it costs 60 munis. Hmm, didn't activate there. Okay, there it goes this time around. So it used to be... Interesting. It used to be when you did this... Uh... There would be two timers, like the timer here and the timer that showed. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit buggy when activating it outside of their range. But this timer and this timer didn't used to sync up. Maybe that was part of the problem. But yeah, if you cancel it, it goes on cooldown, but you do get all of your munitions back. They mentioned they changed the way that the ambush bonus triggers on certain weapons, which is good, because previously, if you're in a situation like this, with just two Jaegers, only the AT rifles, no regular rifles, and you shot at a vehicle, the ambush bonus wouldn't trigger. So that was kind of bad. Light so let's see how it goes this time. Looked like it triggered there, did... Yeah, over 100 damage, so definitely did the extra damage. So that's good that they've addressed that finally. This might be one of the biggest changes of the whole patch, honestly. So congratulations if you stuck around for it. I meant to include it in my gameplay video, but I forgot. But yeah, if you plant an engineer, a mine with an engineer, and then an enemy tank runs over it, uh, it'll give the veterancy to the engineer. Or the kill count or whatever. So you can see I've got no veterancy on the engineer now, just planted that shoe mine. Oh, almost half a level of vet right away like that. So that's big. It's going to make it quite a lot easier to vet up engineers, especially if they've uh, taken the sweeper upgrade. Along the same lines, there's an enemy regal mine here, and when I sweep it up, it doesn't give me any veterancy. So that would be kind of nice if they could add that to make it easier to vet up your sweep engineers as well. Maybe if you've got like you know, 100 vets or something for sweeping up a mine, that'd be cool. Also to do with mines, previously if you planted a mine, you could sweep your own mines by accident if you just right click them, but that's no longer possible. You can no longer right click to sweep your own mines. Don't think it would have been as much of an issue now that all the mines have unique identifiers now, but it's good that they fixed it nonetheless. Another big bug fix is around the casualty clearing function on the med tent. So previously, you know, you'd have a free model loaded up in the med tent, your squad would retreat here, would start reinforcing automatically 
but the model that got added to your squad from the med tent wouldn't end up getting refunded from your queued up reinforcements on your squads quite often. I don't think it happened all the time, but quite often enough that a lot of top players I know would actually disable auto reinforce and manually reinforce their squads just to get the most value out of the med tent. Ready for so uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I've got one reinforcement I believe loaded up in the tent and we'll see if we get a manpower cost reduction right, on the squad as it reinforces. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. I think I've got one model in here. I, I, wish, I wish it told you like how many you had. If you hovered over here or something, or if there was like a counter here. So yeah, got two We're models boys. that came in from the tent. So you can see I got one X is here, First but then that got cancelled. So that cost me 921. So doing some quick maths, uh, th three times 26 is 78. So that should be 922, I think. I don't know how I ended up with 921, but okay. That's it for my 1.40 patch coverage, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you consider hooking all tidy up with a few bucks on Patreon. Cheers. Sure.